Hi friends, welcome back to the channel. I hope you are doing well. So in today's video, I want to show you how you can draw this lovely medieval tiny house. This is one of those pictures you see and you know you have to give it a try. The striking orange walls of the house make it stand out really nicely with the other walls and also makes the house look more joyful. So as always, to begin with, I place my marker paper on a flat surface and put some blue tape on the edges so it doesn't move all around while I'm drawing. And I'll start by drawing a rapid sketch with my mechanical pencil just to see the proportions of the drawing. Now the house is quite tall and because I want to draw some environment around it like other houses and street and walls, I had to draw it slightly shorter. To begin drawing the house, I used a 0.3 fine liner for all the lines of the picture. Since the walls have dark wooden blanks, the lines from the walls will eventually be hidden from the brown colors when coloring the wood.
So here, as I go to the stone walls on the right, this is something that I would draw differently if I were to sketch this image again. If you see the original picture, the colors of the stones don't contrast too much between them and are mostly light tones. This means the line weight might have worked better with a white gel pen, which I then used in the sketch to correct this. So if you want to try this picture, I suggest you make a previous test on a piece of paper to see if you want the stones to have a defined line weight or a more subtle look with a white pen. Now to begin painting the house, there are a lot of orange tones you can find with professional markers. These you see here are the ones I have, but in reality the options are huge. However, one orange color marker I love to work with is number YR09, Chinese orange, which is the one I use for the left side of the house, as well as number YR18, Sangin, as you see in the video. If you want to try out some orange color, I strongly suggest you check the YR09 Chinese orange marker. It is a beautiful strong orange color. And to begin with, I drew the outline of the orange sections first with the small tip of the marker to know exactly where to fill the space with ink.
For the wooden box uh, on the street, I use another orange color, but in a lighter tone, as you can see. And then moving on to the wooden blanks of the wall, I'll be using some E29 and 49 markers. Now here I found out that some of my markers needed to be refilled. However, if you're going to draw wood, having the markers slightly empty might give a nice touch to the drawing as you'll see in the door. And for the blanks themselves, I like to paint the base color, in this case a medium tone brown, followed by a darker tone and finally some lines with my fine liner as you'll see later on. For the wooden windows, I use a BG49 duck blue color, which was very appropriate since there's a duck or goose on the wooden window of the original picture. In this case, I'll leave the duck in white, and it doesn't have to be very obvious it's a duck. It can look almost like a white organic stain on the surface since it's a very small area to draw. And now it's time to paint the roof. And for this part of the house, I use mainly some warm grays. And the idea is to randomly pass the different markers throughout the surface just to give the impression that there are different types of tiles on the roof.
and now comes the walls of the tunnel, street and side house. And for this I randomly picked some light color markers like clay, light yellow and cream tones and began filling each stone with different colors. Again, this was done randomly and here you can see why it might have been a better idea not to use a strong line weight for the stones of the walls simply because it might look more cartoonish than expected. You can check here in the door what I mentioned previously about the marker going dry. It can give an interesting look to the wood. So if you happen to have a marker that's almost dry and need to draw some wooden objects, you can use it to see how it goes. Now on the wall of the side house, there appears to be mold and stains right between both houses in fact. So you can use a light grey tone and also a very light green tone marker to randomly give the idea of shadow and mold on the surface. And then you can paint the grass with different green tones like we did with the roof of the house. So at this point we can say the sketch is almost finished but we can still add more character to the house and to do this I'll use my dark orange marker to randomly draw some lines over the walls of the house. Remember the house is very old so it's a good idea to give some patina to it. I also added some grain lines to the wood with a 0.05 fine liner and while I was on it decided to mark some lines on the walls just to enhance the character of the house.
And now finally we can add some shadows to the house by using some graphite and a blender pencil. And for this I have a coin or lead holder which is an amazing tool since you can unscrew the cap and use it as a sharpener for the lead. I'll leave a link in the description box where you can get one of these. And the idea here is to grab some graphite with your blender pencil and start adding some of it where you want to add more depth and shadow to the picture. So for instance I'll be adding some depth on the door, some shadows on the walls, and on the orange sections I also want to add more graphite to enhance some character to the house even more.